Oregon Ducks and the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Steve Grad and Ed Biles with you. And Oregon has not been to a bowl in 26 years. And they're going to come to a bowl. They thought they'd be coming south for the warmth of a bowl game, but it's 29. The wind chill is 14. It's colder with a chance of sleet later. And if you looked at your weather maps, you saw that big Arctic front from the North Pole literally coming down to the midsection of the United States and Shreveport's at the tip of that at the bottom. Well, these two teams don't know that right now. They're fired up. Both of them are excited. They're ready to kick this thing off. They've been here for a few days. Freeport, Louisiana has been awful good to all of them. They've all enjoyed them themselves and are getting ready for the coin flip out in the middle. And the fans uh, are ready to go. We're ready to go. And I think we're going to have a good football game. I like the Hawaiian atmosphere of the Hurricane fans with the Hawaiian lays around their necks and the team colors. One thing about this ball, it may not be the biggest, but they sure do provide a lot of fun for the kids. Yeah, they really did. They have all kind of festivities going on. Big pep rally last night. There's the referee. There goes the coin cost. Coin used by referee Alfred. And today's kickoff is a silver dollar commemorating the bicentennial of Congress. This coin was provided by the U.S. Mint and could be designated as the official bowl coin of the 1989-90 postseason. He declined the coin flip, apparently, here. Well, I think they, they deferred, deferred to the second half. half. They <laughs> also looked like they won the toss, and because of the win, they preferred to take their choice in the second half. Oregon, of course, now will be going against the wind in this first quarter. Now, the wind isn't exactly blowing straight into Oregon's face anymore. It's not going north to south. It's northeast. That's kind of angular. Yeah, it's really kind of been gusting around. When we first came out, it was really just going from, from the left to the right. The screen as you look at it, which is really north to the south, but now it's kind of gusting around, and it may not be as big a factor as we originally thought. Al Ford's the referee, Nathaniel Anderson, the umpire, Dr. Norbert Ackerman, the lineman, line judge Bob Patrick, Bob Lee, the side judge, William Stanton, the field judge, and Ted Thomas, the back judge. Tulsa 6 and 5, and there's Musgrave, he's loosening up on the sidelines for Oregon. Dave Rader is the Tulsa coach in his second year, and Rich Brooks, the head coach of the Oregon Ducks in his 13th year, and he says, you know, one of the most important things that happened this year, we cracked that psychological seventh victory uh, in our season, and they had never done that under him before. Well, Rich started out, the first, you know, the early years, he was trying to rebuild that program. Now, there's, of course, there's a shot of the officials down on the field that we just told you about, but the last six years, Rich Brooks has been 34 and 31 at Oregon. So he's got the program where he wants it. He's had a good year. He beat some teams that they hadn't beaten in a while. Arizona, Arizona State, folks like the, of that nature. UCLA. Uh, UCLA. And he's, you know, I think he's got the program coming, and this is a good shot in the arm for him coming to this bowl game. They've got Chris Oldham deep for the Oregon Ducks and Michael McClellan. I think that Ron Jackson. Well, number two, of course, is well, number two, of course, but Oldham's a guy Oldham. that's going to bring that back. Now, Oregon, by the way, brought 106 players from the great Northwest down here. There's Oldham, who's third in the NCAA with that return average. Hasn't had a touchdown off a return, but he's capable at any time. And David Feast will do the kicking off. Neither team has had a great success on their kickoffs, but they have to get it high for the coverage men to get down there. No question of that. Now, Oldham, of course, won the blue-gray game. He's going to play in the east-west game. He was first team, Mislu senior, All-American. He's quite an athlete. He was second in kickoff returns last year. So Tulsa moving left to right in the dark blue home uniforms against Oregon in the white with gold. And here's the kickoff. And it's a line drive, and they certainly keep it away. But it'll have to be fielded down on the two-yard line and stopped down at the 12-yard line. The Tulsa Golden Hurricane stopping Ward. And making that tackle was Craig Jones. Here's Musgrave will be the quarterback for the Oregon Ducks. And he'll lead the quack attack, Derek Lavelle will be one of the running backs, along with Latin Barry. There's a guy who just doesn't know when to quit. Terry Obi at one wide out. Tony Hargain will get the start today. He's the junior. And those guys are very, very capable. We'll get to the tight ends and the interior linemen in a moment, but you see Musgrave's statistics. As Oregon begins, first and 10 on their own, 13 against the win. And they start with a reverse. Leave it to Rich Brooks, giving it to Terry Obi wide open. He'll get himself a first down, and then he stopped at the 23-yard line. A nice open field tackle by Eric Candy Bars, the cornerback for the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Interior line, Kurt Dykes. He's going to play in the senior in Japan Bowls for the Oregon Ducks. Chris Yusko, who's played 45 consecutive games. Colin Hall, the center. Todd Gunsman, the right guard. David Collinsworth, the right tackle. And the tight end will be Joe Merton for the University of Oregon. 
That's an amazing record when you talk about that. Cusco, who is 40, this is the 46th consecutive game that he started. That, that's amazing. That'll, that record will probably never be broken because their program now, they won't be starting freshmen. Plus, they played Hawaii, so they got the 12th game, and now they're in that bowl. That was Obi. Slid way out there, got that first out. They give it to the second man through. Slid out, and the swarming Tulsa Hurricane defense stops him right there. Dan Tarabrella is one of the tacklers. And we'll get, it'll be second and 10 from the Oregon 35 for the Ducks. They have a slot to the left. That's where they roll. Musgrave has a man wide open. It's Hargain still on his feet, still on his feet. And there's Hargain pulled down from behind. Derek Williams and Mike Rawson. Boy, they had to fly there. Well, give Mike Rawson a lot of credit. That would have been a touchdown. He's rolling out to his left. You see the outside receiver. You see Hargain coming down to the inside. Now he does a good job of running the ball after he catches it. Look, at it makes one miss. Now, once he gets to that outside there, there's nothing but daylight. Look at Rosen. Chasing Newton at one of the bowl games, but lots of fun, even if you're not on the team. Those Oregon folks have come a long way, and they have enjoyed themselves. Brooks says this is the most balanced offensive attack he's had in the 13 years since he has been at Oregon. Two slots now for the Ducks. Single back of the bell. Throws a nice block, too, as Musgrave throws it to Hargain, who catches the ball beautifully at the 47 of Oregon before he is racked down by Mark Palmer, the free safety, a senior from Olathe, Kansas. Boy, he did a great job of laying this zone coverage. You can see the linebackers. Now, look at him lay over the top here. Lay over the top of the linebackers in front of the deep safety. Musgrave showed excellent touch on that pass. Not an easy pass to throw over the top of the line. They were dropped back there pretty good. They had pretty good depth on their, on their drop, but he laid it in between the deep uh, secondary and the linebackers. Oregon racking up a lot of yardage. Coming into this drive, they had a total of 109 yards in the first quarter. And I like to hear that with a football play. That's the reason it's cool. Second and eight. 7.35 to go in the first half of play. That's Hargain in motion, the rolling pocket to the right. Musgrave, way, way out, and it is caught! A sensational catch by Reitzig at the 22-yard line. Well, we said earlier that he makes those acrobatic catches, and that's exactly what he did there out of Tacoma, a junior. And he timed that perfectly. Again, remember now, Musgrave is throwing with the wind. Watch the spiral stay a little bit better on this one, but watch Wrightsey go up and take this way. Watch him go up and make a great over-the-shoulder, good concentration, look the ball all the way in. It wasn't that bad a defensive position by the defensive back. That was his longest reception of the year. It is first and ten. Musgrave again. Dumps a little one out to the tight end, Burton again, but it was behind him, and he couldn't come back for it. There's the man covering on the play, number 48, Sidney Prince, who's starting tonight. Well, Sidney Prince getting a great opportunity to play. 6'2", 230-pounder in there because of Luke being disciplined. Also, Dan Tarabrella made a lot of pressure for the Golden Hurricane. 7-3, Tulsa on top. Oregon moving left to right, 7.03 to go in the second quarter of play. Out of the eye for the Ducks. They've got right Zig and Hargain, the wide odds. Hargain had to spin all the way around, catches it at the 10, heading for the end zone. Touchdown, Oregon. Wow, did he make a great move after he caught that pass, though, to bring it back to the inside and take it into the end zone. His fifth touchdown catch of the year. Well, take a look at the move he makes after he catches the ball. Well, right here, now watch him make this move. Boom, spin back to the inside. Another move here, and he sees the end zone and dives to get in there. Great run after he caught the ball for, by Hargate. Turned a short gainer into a touchdown play by just great running ability. Right there, he spins away from the tackle, makes another move there. Now it's a foot race. He's going to dive to get into that end zone. Craig McCallum, who has a field goal tonight, will try the extra point. And the Oregon Ducks now lead the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. 10 to 7. Hargate has four receptions for 82 yards, and that one was so impressive because he was heading for the sideline and had to come all the way back on the 360. Oh, that's a great move by him. And again, the ability to run after he catch the ball is tremendous for a receiver. Coaches love to see that. So he turns this, it's basically just a short game, probably about a three or four yard pass. Now watch the move he makes there, planting that left foot, driving off of it. Now he sees where the end zone is at, and he's not worried about anybody except getting himself into the end zone. Great running after the catching the ball by Tony Hargain. He's got good size, too. You're looking about a 6'1", 180-pounder. 
boy, I'll tell you, what a difference from a year ago when he had only five receptions. And that drive, by the way, was five plays, 79 yards. It took up a minute and 49 seconds. But Hargain had five catches last year. He now has over 40 this year. He had eight in one game against the Washington Huskies. You're talking Washington now. So this is quite a scoring drive and quite a credit. A 20-yard pass to Hargain.